Our culture is headed towards the point of no return. Men, in particular, are having their healthy instincts and their very identity ripped away from them. All the while, the world at large seems to descend further and further into chaos. In the words of Steve and Pauline Richards, the way things are going, there are only two possible outcomes to our collective trajectory. The decisive factor between them will be consciousness. Consciousness of human nature, of the evolutionary reality of masculinity and femininity. As we approach the potential end, will men at large be fortunate enough to have a near-death experience, to wake up with enough time to reverse the decline? Or will they have a terminal lucidity, to realise what's going on just as we cross the event horizon, when it's far too late to do anything about it? This video is a dialectic with my mentors, Steve and Pauline Richards, depth psychologists with 43 years each of frontline clinical experience. In their assessment, what's going on is not the result of politicians, ideologies, or people not thinking straight, as is often bandied around, but rather a field-like dynamic arising from the collective genome with a very specific teleology. To drive the population down. It's Darwinian, and yet it's also Jungian, biological and psychological, as superpositioned between each other. There is a way to reverse this chaos, and the three of us here really hope, really hope that this comes to pass. But ultimately, it will be decided by consciousness. Will our culture truly come to understand, or will the worst happen? Will there be a terminal lucidity of the masculine. You guys haven't spoken an enormous amount, at least from what I've heard, so presumably it's it's correct, but on the terminal lucidity of the masculine or the feminine before. Um, I did a quick search on Discord and there was only one post saying you would talk about it. So um, I'm aware of what terminal lucidity is, but only in, 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 in say it's um, psychiatric or whatever form. And it looks really weird, really, really weird. Um, but I don't really know anything about it as a general concept or really about the masculine or the feminine component to it too. So I think this could be good fun. Yeah, so it's a bit of a meme and it's something which is turned up in posts on YouTube to the channel. Um, and Rupert Sheldrake's mentioned it too. He, he very much believes in it and he's witnessed, he says, this happening with people who've had dementia and suddenly they're lucid just before the end, as if the dementia didn't exist, really exist in any form other than the representation being superpositioned, as we would say, between brain damage and what the person can articulate, remember, uh, you know, the state of their personality and how that has apparently been deleted by the dementia. But then in terminal lucidity, they're about to die, that seems to vanish. And uh, Rupert Sheldrake's view is that that proves that personality and, the, and memory are not located in the brain, or at least not only in the brain, and something happens just before death that generates this terminal lucidity. So uh, when Pauline first mentioned this idea to me, it, it, it struck me that, yeah, there is a kind of terminal lucidity of the masculine that we could anticipate coming about um, as things get so bad that we get towards that singularity, that point where the should we call it the catabolic dynamic that's at work in the culture is about to achieve its complete success. And, and um, men basically start to destroy themselves, delete themselves from the gene pool, that kind of thing. Um, but there's a chance there will be a kind of terminal lucidity that is not fatal. It's more like a terminal or non-terminal near death experience from which the masculine can recover, but it could go either way. In, in terms of how many men actually make it through this crossover, what Jung would have called an enantiodromia, the turning into the opposite, if you like, of this catabolic into an anabolic period of growth. Right, right. And that and that that um anticipated terminal lucidity of the masculine then, 
Um, do, do you anticipate that that's going to be uh, something that will actually come to pass and will hence be an, um, a very important stepping stone for perhaps the culture turning itself around at the last moment, hence the enantiodromia part? Well, uh, shall I just answer yeah, briefly? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I hope so. And I, I think in terms of the, the cultural level, there's evidence that that is happening. And you'll know, and our Discord people will know, and the people that we've worked with in consultations will know that Paul and I predicted about three years ago where we're at right now. And that wasn't because uh, we have any paranormal ability. It's just because we're tuned into the collective in terms of the collective psyche, as Jung would understand it, or even the behavioural morphogenetic fields, as Rupert Sheldrake would understand it, that we would see this this um, after the US midterms, because we, you know, we think ahead, of course, and we predicted ahead, that if the present uh, administration was the present administration, by this time, we would get to the point of, of closest to collapse right for, across the, the globe. Um, and then we would see a ramping up of uh, the catabolic dynamic to it, its maximum point of absolute open insanity, not even hiding itself anymore, uh, because the, there would be a representation collectively that if it didn't do that, it would switch. The, the, the system would flit it. And we would also see little spikes occurring across the field as a whole to suggest there was a reversal about to occur. That's happening. Now, hopefully, there will be a representation at the level of the masculine collectively uh, that will be a kind of near-death rather than eternal lucidity. Well, I think we're, we're, we're close to that point of absurdity now, really, yeah. aren't we? Um, and the thing about something like a near-death experience um, in that real sense is that it it so it it only becomes uh, a near death experience if the right interventions aren't put into place for it to for that person. If we can talk about the a, a metaphorical person maybe having a near death experience, it only becomes that if that person isn't restored back to life and there are processes e even with respect to the the physiological processes and the shutting down um, of the brain um, when somebody is close to death that if the right interventions are made that 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 situation is fully reversible mm -hmm. uh, and and that person uh, can be prevented from saying having you know catastrophic brain or organ damage there are things that can be done to prevent that from happening and effectively bringing that person back to life mm -hmm. so if you use that as a maybe a metaphor for what could happen in the culture that if if we know that there is an opportunity now um, coming about collectively for the state of things to to be addressed with respect to to men and the way that men are treated in the culture and so on we can do something about that we can actually restore some kind of homeostasis to the field and um help men young men men of all ages to recover uh, that which they have either lost or they uh, with respect to the masculinity or fear that they're about to lose that is a recoverable position but it's whether or not I think enough of us wake up literally wake up because to be woke is not to be awake no. it, it, it's actually the reverse of that's yeah. to be asleep if we really wake yeah. up and become conscious what is happening uh, and we understand the forces that are, are at work across the board including the way that uh, women have changed and adapted to the culture accordingly and that that may as we said I think in, in a previous video why why that may take more than one representational form um, and, and how do young men deal with that how do young men know what they're up against with respect to women and how women receive or reject the masculine accordingly yeah. so um, I think the opportunity is you know the time the time is nigh uh, is. really uh, yeah. it's just a case of what we do about it i can see in what you guys are saying uh, certainly super positioned in there is darwin freud and adler um and obviously field phenomena too but it seems like if there's going to be a terminal lucidity of the masculine that would 
also require or initiate de facto a terminal lucidity of the feminine as well um or else it, or else th perhaps that would continue on unnecessarily um people obviously helping to fix the culture it certainly would but um to have both sexes returning back to lucidity again let, let's say would obviously be the solution that the culture really really needs to stop it being so sick so would you see a, a, a reciprocity really between those two Oh, I think absolutely, James. I think there has to be, um, because otherwise, arguably, there's there is no relating between the sexes going on at all. They're, they're, they're kind of uh, they're, they're completely cut adrift from one another, and um, th there's probably a lot of things that need to happen. There's probably uh, you know on both sides of the equation of you know, men and women understanding how we've reached this point uh, and, and just how damaging it's been to relationships. And uh, I, I think probably um, there may need to be a little bit more, well, maybe it's unfair to say this, maybe, uh, you know, because it's, it's me saying it and I'm a woman, uh, but maybe because we, we see a lot of men in our practice, but... There is a, a huge area of unconsciousness in, in men that relates to their perception of women and the kinds of things that women do in order to satisfy Freud and Adler, in other words, to satisfy uh, the need for relationships and for resources and for reproduction and, and all of those basic instincts. And they're, they're the same they're the same across the board irrespective of how they're dressed up in terms of surface structure in terms of how uh, women represent themselves to the culture and, and therefore to men so I think if men were to understand that I think that would be enormously helpful um and you know it's easy to spot the obvious you know representations and we've talked about that before uh less so with the other forms of representation and you know equally any kind of polarization is bad of course it is yeah. uh, and any extreme and so um for the sake of homeostasis that, that for women specifically there has to be some kind of return to some sort of you know uh mid position um but at the moment i don't think we're seeing that i think we are seeing extremes uh that you know, in, in a political sense, represent the far left and the far right uh, politically, uh, and and then how those things are, those dynamics are expressed psychologically. So uh, women are, are, are very, very polarised with respect to their own psychology um, and, and how they represent that psychology to men. Um, so I think we do need to get to grips with that. So they're the women are the context for men. Yes. Oh, if they were to yes. actually, the men were actually to have a terminal lucidity, that would be a disaster because mm. they, they, they're finished. Yeah. But they would have that last glimmer of understanding before yes. it was too late, and exactly. they they disappear over the event horizon. Yeah. And they're gone. Yeah. So obviously, uh, that's uh, the worst case scenario. That's a singularity point from which there is no return, mm. and. Um, the catabolism is pushing, or has been pushing, that way. And the only way to make sense of that, I think, is Darwinian. Mm. And yet we've observed that people well known and respected, for example, evolutionary biologists on the Internet who should know better, have not seen or understood how this is a field phenomenon that is operating. So it's not just evolutionary biology that has a context which is not only the environment within which biology has evolved, that is to say, on the planet level, yeah but there's a complete failure to understand psychology outside of a collapse yeah. into psychological reductionism, yeah. which is an abstraction yeah. and separates itself off. Um, so typically then you get these evolutionary biologists talking about things. They do not have the language to articulate any kind of understanding of about how what we understand and believe and think is psychology is actually superposition with mm -hmm. biology yeah. and the environment yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. And it's that that young meant, I am absolutely certain about this, when he went on about the collective unconscious. Mm. 
Uh, it wasn't only psychology. It certainly wasn't ego psychology and therefore certainly was not the kind of psychology that passes for psychology in universities. Yeah. But these evolutionary biologists generally are academics they, mm. and they groove, they collapse into a cognitive loop mm. represented by their discipline and then try and talk about psychology. And it just does not work. And you see an extraordinary naivety coming out from these people. Mm. Um, they should know better mm. that the genome is involved in a global species wide uh, regulation of the human population at a, a level which can only be described as being a kind of sentience, a yeah. kind of consciousness. Yeah. But that itself mm. is set against the regulation of the planet as a whole, as, mm. as a biosphere. Mm. And uh, they, don't, they don't get it. They don't understand it. Um, it's remarkable, really, that, that, that that's the case. So the terminal lucidity will lead to an extinction event or it will lead to a new adaptation. And humans are uniquely positioned to do this because of the fact that we have this ridiculously enlarged cortex that can generate virtual uh, possibilities for the future. That, of course, means that we can generate neurosis almost ad infinitum, because virtual modelling has that as the downside of its positive side of being able to be flexible and adaptive. We can also get neurotic, and it means we can collapse into this cognitive loop that academics get into when they, they divide their um, academic disciplines from one another and then cross boundaries and try and interpret each other. But this is probably one of, if not the greatest gift, there are two in my view for its worth, uh, that, that's come out of Jung's work. Uh, and the one I'm emphasizing now is an understanding of the collective nature that we, that we all are embodied in. When he talks about the psychoid unconscious, I disagree that you, you can't cross that. You can, you just can't take your ego with you. Mm -hmm. In a superpositional sense, you can. But his intuition about the collective nature of, of uh, what he called the psyche is that there are forces that, that mobilize people collectively that has nothing to do with what we believe that we're doing, but makes sense in an evolutionary, a Darwinian yeah perspective we have to go there to understand what's happening now and this of course leads to the freud adler young equation where freud in this context represents instinct mm. broadly mm. the gratification of instinct in service of the genome and then we get to adler adler in this context meaning the expression of power so freud seeks adler because adler necessarily uh, or is necessary to the to the completion of freud impulses and desires and then when we get to the Jungian pathology in this context, we get the elevation of political dogma into a religious-like uh, grandiosity and inflation. So we see the green movement then as mm -hmm. part of this, part of this, uh, this regulatory uh, dynamic that's emerging from deep down in the genome and within the collective field of, the, of biology as a whole on this planet uh, as an attempt to regulate the size of the population. And then we find that the politicians are doing this and that, that, that food is being messed with and uh, resources are being controlled. Uh, all sorts of things are being uh, driven by politicians and their short term reward is Freudian gratification whilst they inflate. But underneath it all, the dynamic is without a doubt Darwinian and it's, it's about natural selection. So um, men are being tested and women are being tested yeah. differently, but yeah. they are the context for one another. Mm. So does that drive down? Uh, and those men who are not in a state of terminal lucidity, but only near death and recover from it, mm. will be able to fight back and occupy the niche spaces that are voided by those who do go through a terminal lucidity. But it's too late. Bye bye. The image is frozen on the events horizon and then they're gone. They're deleted from the gene pool. In the Darwinian sense, they were not fit. They did not adapt. And as James suggested, and as you've you've, you've pointed out, and mm. it's in your work, Paul. Sorry, mm. if I'm speaking. No, no, not I'm speaking for your fine. work at no, the no, moment, but, but the, the same is true for women. Yeah. The selective pressures on them are different. Yeah. But men and women are the context for one another. Mm. Yeah. But that's the subject of a lot of your your work, isn't it, on the feminine psyche at the moment? Yes, uh, it is. Um... As you were speaking, I see, I was thinking about, uh, I was still thinking about the, the metaphor of, <laughs> of the dying person, yeah. uh, because I think it is a useful one. It translates across, uh, as in 
what are the interventions necessary to bring somebody back, say, from the point of death? And in broad terms, uh, it requires obviously mechanisms to be put in place that are protective uh, of that person, of the organism as a whole. So it might be something like, um, you know, cooling the body so uh, that the, the actual um, metabolism of the cells is reduced yeah. uh, and therefore the, you know, the amount of effort, the amount of work that's required to, to, to sustain that person. So it's in a psychological sense, if, if I was to kind of try and draw an analogy with that, it'd be a kind of conservation withdrawal. Uh, a period of uh, reflection uh, in which there would be um, some new realisation, some new consciousness of what was happening. And maybe that's why um, we're becoming as polarised as we are and, and as men and women and as separated from one another as we are, because we actually literally do need to take that metaphorical step back and have a period of conservation withdrawal in which we reflect on where we are now and how we've got here, yeah. because that's important as well. It if is. we don't understand the lessons of history, we yeah. don't understand how we've got here in the first place. So yeah. if it is possible for people to pause and to have some kind of... Uh, enlightenment really in effect some some new understanding some new form of consciousness it is possible to retrieve uh, ourselves from the brink yeah. and and to prevent yeah. you know the very thing that we're discussing yeah. happening i think that's eminently possible mm. but we do have to do it and we have to be active about doing it we do so do you have any thoughts on that james I do loads. It's, 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 it's really, really interesting stuff that you guys are bringing up, to be honest. Um, um, it's, it sounds to me like what people need to do, both men and women, is to separate themselves in a way from the selection pressure, yeah. the Darwinian selection pressure that's going on all the time, because there's different ways you can relate to that pressure. You know, you can, you can, and some, and I, I understand from a point of view why some young men do this. They reject women completely that's one way of adapting to it so i'm not playing with this you're not having my resources or anything like like that um others will be will be forced almost like uh, in like a, a panic to use a metaphor not literally um to go for any woman at yeah. all or breed with any woman or several women or whatever those different strategies happen to be across the, across the board but it sounds like what people need to do is to um make themselves more solid so in that in that conservation withdrawal sense that, that you're mentioning pauline um like the, people need to reconnect more to themselves a core to themselves i'm kind of getting a bit of affective language i guess coming up from within that their self-concept their instincts their their genome everything else that brings them together that can mean they can almost dissociate away from that from that pressure so that, that that's, that's more like an echo really of my own thought process of was going through my head when you were speaking pauline on the conservation withdrawal because i can't see it happening any other way to be honest um because the selection pressure is an awful context that most are unconscious of and will simply just be pulled along in a slipstream wherever it wants to sort of push them really yes um it's a difficult one james isn't it because um the pressure from the culture and the su suggestion from the culture is, is such an, and so overwhelming for most people um, that they don't even understand how they're being manipulated, how their instincts are being manipulated. So it's very hard for them to, to, to take a stand or to take a personal stand away from that influence. Um, and, you know, we've, We've seen it in so many ways over the past few years, particularly, and it, it, it is a problem with unconsciousness because if, if we if we don't have that conscious understanding of how we're being manipulated, then uh, effectively what Steve was saying earlier um, about the collective genome, uh, we'll, we'll pick that up and um, 
we, we, we won't have any relationship to that. The decisions will be made for us in mm. spite of us by something that we uh, or a force that we, we don't even really uh, reckon with or, uh, you know, accept has the potential uh, to influence um, behavior on a collective level. And uh, th that that's the main concern. I think there are people waking up, like Steve said, there are sort of um, islands of consciousness are, are appearing um, collectively and uh, but there needs to be more of that. And um, you know, it's it's you can only really do what you can do as an individual. And I guess even talking like this between ourselves is a way of trying to raise other people's awareness and, co and consciousness of how they might be being manipulated. So, you know, the, these sort of um, groups of people, including ourselves, hopefully will create, well, you know, like a kind of a pressure group will, will help to um, spread the ideas uh, further afield. Uh, and that presumably will be a positive thing. But um, that that process of coming to consciousness is is, is essential really for, for arresting um, where we're heading. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, we, we, we can only hope we can only do our bit. In, in the sense of what's going on at the um, moment in Eastern Europe and how that's ramifying out, yeah. the, there is an element of the masculine psyche at work there which is also in conflict with the way that the feminine is uh, oh definitely is pushing itself and um i think a significant part of this is that some of the film that's coming back from the fighting uh shows what men will do when their instincts seize them at the ultimate level for self-sacrifice and for, for, for doing damage. The fact that there are hundreds of thousands of men actively engaged in <laughs> trying to kill each other shows that this is pure Darwinism at one level, however that's represented politically, and then in a spiritual, young, and ideological way, the, the, the baseline is Darwinian. What's going on there is Darwinian. And it's mainly men who are doing the, the frontline fighting, overwhelmingly so. Um, and in part, and this might sound controversial, I think that this is part of the terminal lucidity of the masculine. If that spreads, and it could do, uh, there's been a threat to uh, Israel from one of the sides involved in this current conflict, uh, a serious one. Um, and then there's Iran, which is uh, boiling itself up. And then uh, China has just started to um, send in aircraft again and warships into Taiwanese territorial waters and airspace. It could, it could go full bore into a, uh, a global war, which will be designed by the parties who will initiate it to bring down the West, because America can't fight on three or four different fronts at the same time. And at the moment, they're using proxies in Europe to do it for all sorts of reasons, which we don't need to go into. But I would say that this is the unfortunate aspect of the terminal lucidity of the masculine. It will go that far to resource itself. It will trash the world. And the terminal incline of the feminine is to push men to do it. Yeah. And they are doing. Yeah. And they appear not to be, but they are. Yeah. Because the same woke culture, which which hates what it calls toxic masculinity, is bringing it about on that level and on that scale. And the politicians who are, who think they're in control of this are not in control of this. This is Darwinian, and it's on a species wide level now. And uh, the potential is for a massive collapse, as I said on Discord in the post the other day, that the 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 Cold War was the Third World War that didn't happen but should have, and. The scale of this regulating dynamic it matches exactly where we're at with respect to population. The real First World War was the Napoleonic Wars in the 18th and early 19th centuries. Winston Churchill called it the First World War, not the Great War, which was the First World War, as we call it now. It was that. And it was scaled exactly to the population and to the superpowers of the time. It, it was in many different locations across the British and French empires and then across Europe and into Russia. It was a global war. Um, then we got the problem with the American Civil War uh, because America had no external enemies or threats 
And when that happens, when there is no in, uh, external enemy, uh, a large political, geographical and population density like that turns on itself. It's Darwin again. Mm. Then we had the First World War and we had the uh, Spanish fl uh, flu, global pandemic that, that was coterminous with it. Then we had the Second World War and then we should have had the Third World War and it didn't happen. Uh, instead, we got a geopolitical re realignment, which is allowing what's going on now to happen. This is a pulse. And as our population is increasing, um, the, the, the threat of autocatabolic self-regulation emerging from the genome incrementally increases. Now, the, with, with the, the, uh, the Cold War, if that had gone hot, that would have been an extinction event. So it didn't happen. So we weren't taken to the brink. And now there is the insane illusion that you can have a local nuclear war or you know, uh, several wars simultaneously going off. What would that do? It would damage the ecology. It would damage the economy. And there would be a massive drop in, in global population. At the same time, we have politicians of a particular orientation and others who are talking about bringing the population down dramatically and quickly and then we, we look at how the relationships between the two biological sexes have been manipulated particularly in the west is to bring down the population so there is a collective dynamic superposition at several levels that's driving towards a catastrophe so the terminal lucidity of the masculine in that context would be an awareness that we'd actually destroyed ourselves due to psychological ignorance of, of, a, of a Darwinian uh, instinctive pressure coming from below. And our evolutionary biologists are ignorant of that. They are foolish beyond belief. Um, our politicians get the short-term reward of gratification. Uh, so their ardor conceals Freud. They inflate, so they become Jungian in a pathological sense. Uh, but there, is, there, there are signs of resistance and almost uh, unfortunately regardless of anything else that is very unfortunate about what's going on in europe at the moment in the east of europe is that that is an assertion of the masculine uh, and that's the tragedy of it because they're, they're, it's exactly what happened with the first world war where people are volunteering they're, they're they're joining it up in droves and they're going through a deletion process which fundamentally is about territory and territory is about resources. And then it's going to be about the relationship to women. When the, when the fighting's over, the, the men who survive will go back to their women and they have been brutalized. The toxic masculinity that they apparently rejected is being, uh, is being reinforced now. Uh, and if the war does go into to local wars, but still global, uh, with respect, it breaks out everywhere. If China does invade Taiwan, <laughs> What can you yeah. do that? I just said, if China, if China, if China attacks Taiwan, <laughs> off we get switched, you know. <laughs> I, I didn't even, I didn't hear that part. Um, you, it was like a cliffhanger of what you were about to say. It must, must have been the China so, comment. So if China uh, attacks Taiwan, there will be a local mass culling of the population, mainly of men. Uh, in order to have any chance of survival, they will ramp up their masculinity and become toxic. Uh, and so it will go on. And, but when these populations, those who survive, eventually go home to their women, it's going to be exactly the kind of man that they did not want or said that they didn't want. But the, um, the, the shit testing that's been going towards men basically is a Darwinian pressure test to force them to actually become the thing that the women are saying that they're rejecting because that's Darwinian again. Um, so the population is heading towards collapse through various uh, superposition levels of opportunity. Uh, but what will emerge out from that if the human species is to be viable is a return to basic Darwinian instincts and definitions of, of biological reproductive classifications of gender. That's the, 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 the hidden dynamic in this absolute nonsense. They don't realize these politicians, they are not in control. This is being driven by a force that's stronger than any of them. And the only chance we have is to become conscious in the way that you say, uh, Paul. But those yeah. who will have the terminal lucidity will probably be the, should we say, the more, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a hard way to, hard thing to say this, but, but the, should we say the more, um, less 
the less masculine men who will not fight, who have gone along with the degradation of the masculine, um, who will be left wondering what the hell went wrong because they'd lost their masculinity. They hadn't even fought. They haven't even got into the, into the competition, but they're still being deleted. Uh, and when those other men come back and see those who stayed at home and put the hair in buns and all the rest of it, you know, and uh, were iffy about their identity, they are not going to be competitive. And, and that population of men who come back are going to want the women that they fought and died for. Now, this is Darwin. Darwin's orchestrating all of this. They, 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 these idiot politicians need to wake up. And so do the men and so do the women. Mm -hmm. The fact that you see it um, with the right eye, really, in pretty much every area of culture, as you as you said, for example, with the politicians, but it is literally everywhere, isn't it? The media and school and that kind of, um, you can use the word indoctrination, you know, if it's, that suggests a conscious aspect, and some of it certainly is. But the fact that it's literally everywhere does suggest it's something that's deep. It's not like just an ideology that's spreading. It's not um, uh, one or two very evil people trying to do you know evil things or anything like that no it is it's got to be deep it's got to be deep and it is worldwide yeah. um i i appreciate what, what, what you say steve as well about uh, the evolutionary biologist not understanding or, or being be, uh, i think the word that you used was um it's like, for, like, for, like foolish they don't have the yeah. psychological yeah. literacy really to, to 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 tackle these very important problems i don't think that most of them i don't think most of them actually believe in darwin at all actually believe in darwin at all but they don't apply it to human beings ever human beings are cognitive and rational and everything else we're separate somehow to the animal kingdom and it's like you've pushed why be an evolutionary biologist in the first place why how this 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 suggests there's something seriously wrong and i'm wondering if that's with some academics not all but with, but with some um it's also an adlerian trade-off like with um, like with the politicians, it's like you get your ivory tower and you get your your nice salary and your whatever, um, and you can just sit around chatting useless nonsense most yeah. most most of the time, really, while being de facto unwilling gatekeepers of something that's actually quite important, um, such as an understanding of Darwin and our connection to the animal kingdom, which seems to be utterly crucial in all of this. Um, a uh, an anamnesis of human nature. And the animalistic parts of, of human nature too. I feel I feel a strong, um, to put it in a cognitive way, a strong affective response to what you're saying, Steve. I, I, I feel what you are saying, um, yeah. and the kind, of, the, the kind of deep sense. It's so real. Thank you, James. If you take a superpositioned uh, perspective, so you're seeing everything working as a field phenomenon across the globe, which we can take to be an ecology, an informational ecology. There is an organisation going on here. But it's not at the political level. That's why the, the politicians look so inept. They actually are because they're not in control of it. The thing that's in control is biology, oddly, uh, at a level of sentience, which the biologists don't understand. Rupert Sheldrake would understand this because he understands field phenomena. And he basically defined it and introduced that uh, as a... Uh, as a way of seeing things. And the nearest analog to him would be Carl Jung. And if you put the two together, if you apply dialectical syncretism between Sheldrake and Jung, you actually begin to see what's coming through. But you do have to have Darwin in the mix as well. Not only Rupert Sheldrake, not only um, Carl Jung, Darwin has to be there. And then it's absolutely clear what's going on. Right, and part of the trap as well then, um... For, for for say the up and coming generation at the at, at the moment is avoiding um avoiding things that appear to be a solution to the problem but really are not they're really orchestrated as part of the same shit test yeah. so obviously we, we we spoke in the previous video about um so-called right wing hyper feminine presentations of the feminine being one thing but also then gurus to internet gurus and how it seems to be because I've, I've watched the internet guru scene since almost it's as far as I'm aware, almost its conception. And it does seem to be increasing over time um, to an ever-increasing level of, of absurdity, to be honest, and almost like a caricature of what masculinity should be um, with the most, uh, I won't name him, but the most recent very, very, very popular one being enormously popular, like seemingly the, the most popular we've ever had in the whole culture of the internet, who is toxically masculine, in that sort of quote unquote way in every single possible way, but it's not the solution that the young men are after. 
it's not the solution that they're after. It's it's not what they want, um, and they can't achieve that kind that kind of thing anyway. It's 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 a complete caricature. So and and you you, you mentioned before, Steve, that you know um, it's, it's which is kind of similar to this topic that some people will eventually wake up after following a guru in the in the desert for for forty years or whatever you know which be part of this whole terminal lucidity stuff too but, so the answer is not going to be found in something that's um outside of oneself that they're attracted to out of a sense of frustration it's got to be a connection to something from within that the individual genome will resist the select the collective selection yeah. pressure yeah yeah those gurus the kind that you mentioned there are a number of them uh, obviously I, i'm aware of who or i think i'm aware of who you mean as an example they become fantasy holding spaces by projective identification for things that these young men are not doing or not being given the um, the opportunity to do and this is for me the, the interesting thing about why the conflicts are breaking out that are real and they're not fantasies uh, and i say some of the film it's horrific uh, of, of close range fighting and I saw one literal shot of a man being filmed from a drone uh, a soldier um, on one of the sides walked around the right angle of a, a trench having thrown a grenade around the corner thinking it was safe and when he walked round there was a very brief struggle and the the other soldier emptied an entire magazine of an AK-47 assault rifle into his chest at point blank range the, the savagery is on that level and of course it's always been on that level when it comes to hand hand fighting so if there's um a collective fantasy move towards these internet gurus it's because the opportunity to be masculine in that way that awful survival kill or be killed way isn't there for them and we know that in a civilized uh, society we don't really want that but the thing is the genome will want it when things are heading towards a collapse because it will say now is the time for that pole of human nature to express itself otherwise there will be an extinction event some of the men have to fight and this is the terrible danger that the way the women have been going uh, is forcing men to do this the preparation for it in fantasy is the internet guru but when the real opportunity occurs it, it could potentially break out everywhere you know, and we, 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 we could have a world war on that basis. It's, uh, it's awful. But if the population is sick and the culture is sick to the extent that it appears to be, then the genome will throw the switch and say, how many of you are going to be left standing? We'll start again. And you don't need many to start again. You don't need many to start again. No. Yeah. Um, we were prevented, it see, I think, collectively from having a hot war in the cold war which would have been an extinction event so it's put on hold uh, but uh, the the mechanisms to bring about a true third world war were being laid down politically and culturally and they were allowed to run um, and now we're seeing what's happening this is another attempt at homeostasis from a biological collective species-wide genomic level uh, because there are too many people there are but this is not the way surely mm -hmm surely this is not the way to do it and, and to give the power to politicians to to bring this about through their look over here mm -hmm. tactics whilst they accrue wealth and corruption which is their payoff uh, for being in service of uh, what might end up being phanatos mm -hmm. for all of us it's almost as if women um and certainly some you know prominent female politicians come to mind uh, as well as I'm saying that, that, that are prepared to sell their own men down the river in order to introduce a population or reintroduce a population of men who will, in effect, be more vigorous, more masculine. Yeah. It, it's as if they're wanting that to happen themselves yeah. because... Yeah they've gone too far in the wrong direction as well yeah. Yeah. and uh, otherwise it, it makes no rational sense what's going on it on, doesn't does no, it no, to um no not, not at the top level no. so to, uh, of uh, reflexive consciousness yeah it appears to be insane mm. but it it doesn't from that which is orchestrating oh, no? everything and that's yeah. that's the problem yeah i mean years and years ago uh, paul and i you know because we've been familiar with young young ideas for well over 40 years, 43, 44 years plus, when Jung predicted, most of his predictions 
don't you know they, they didn't come to pass he was wrong about the age of aquarius that didn't happen yeah he was wrong about the positive feminine that certainly didn't happen <laughs> and it was in consideration of those ideas that made us produce the hypothesis that when wotan appears again mm. as he said he would it wouldn't be a he that appeared wotan would take on the form of the feminine uh, that would be the way, that would be the ideal way to be the destroyer of the world, Yeah, would be to turn the collective feminine. Uh, and that would resolve into focus of a few women dotted around in a political uh, role who would bring about uh, the destruction of civilization. Yeah. So Wotan would wear a woman's face or several women more likely. Yeah. And that was a prediction we made. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, not because we're, um, you know, paranormally aware or anything like that but it was just the way culture seemed to be going yeah that, that as soon as this uh, emphasis on the, the so-called feminine was elevated through an adlerian level of politics into a jungian level of inflation wotan would indeed emerge but would no longer appear to be a man or men or, or men it would be the feminine gone wrong well, we've had, you know, if we can name a few, if it's OK to do that. Uh, well, maybe maybe not. Well, I won't name names then. Yeah. But, but the most recent example that I can think of with respect to the, the, the conflict that we've been talking about um, is the German foreign minister. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Who put a foot in it massively. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. obviously there are plenty of other women not yeah. just german women as yeah. you say women yeah. dotted around all, the world who are doing yeah. similar have, sorts been, of things been doing terrible things yes yeah yeah. Um, yeah so there you go there's mm. the inflation yeah but it, it's not even about gender at the end of the day because it's coming from the genome collectively yeah mm -hmm. it looks like this this ties very heavily into the video we did last year on female narcissism and relating being the title of it um and it's like and, and again it goes back to the, the previous conversation we were having too um about when guys are born into this culture um usually it seems that their mothers uh, are of one particular kind or another that might not be let's say the best for them and then the culture seems to have been set up so that men are exposed to a very long line of say female teachers and the culture itself then then wraps itself around that encouraging all kinds of strange ideas um scaring the shit out of people as well to put it to put it lightly um, in terms of say this don't say this behave like this you can't think like this you should think like this all of that kind of thing so is it is it really a case that um it is literally going to be a case of remembering who you are in terms of as, as the antidote to this, really, within young men, that a, a true anamnesis process that um, the anima complex, let's say, that's configured itself culturally uh, as a superposition of individual men's anima complexes needs to be altered or looked behind to see what was there more fundamental from the very beginning, that, that uh, what, what the genome has anticipated is not has not come to pass at least not necessarily in its full form and instead the thing to do is to go back to something that's far more fundamental yeah. beneath the uh, i'll call it it programming really would that would that be along the lines of what someone could do practically definitely uh you just to add to that james so uh the genome of course with respect to say mothers and sons the, the genome anticipates a handing over from mothers, from the feminine to the father, uh, at the point at which the son should be delivered into the world and uh, helped to adapt to the outside world. And I don't think that's happened anything like sufficiently. No. Uh, I, I think mothers by and large have become increasingly involved in their son's lives to an unhealthy degree. Uh, and again, you see it turning up in, in the culture in various forms, even down to the kind of, you know, uh, television programmes we watch like Smothered and things like that. You know, there is, you know, it's suggestive of a way to intimate involvement uh, of mothers with their sons uh, to the point that they're robbed of their masculinity. And then, of course, if uh, if the father is on the scene, if, if he can be marginalised and, and his masculinity attenuated so that the, the, the mother's influence is dominant, well, that's, that's a disaster as well. So um, I, I think we need to understand more about our biology 
uh, and where we come from in an evolutionary sense and uh, not try to just tack something on um, that is uh, that, that won't take, um, you know, because we're, we're not of today. As Jung himself said, you know, uh, we're not even of the recent past. We, we go back, you know, millennia. Um, and um, I think women have to come to terms with, with what they've been doing. Uh, and to some extent, they've been culturalized into it. They've been yeah. uh, made to believe it's been suggested to them that that's the thing to do. Uh, and I think we have a whole generation of young men who, who have suffered accordingly because their own mothers haven't known when to take a step back. Yeah. And, and they continue on with on with it. I mean, yeah. this is the problem with lots of uh, lo a lot of ideas is that people double down on them yeah. rather than saying, actually, do you know, we've, we've got this wrong. Uh, th th this is damaging. We shouldn't continue with it. Yeah. Yeah. Even chaos is regulated. There's a purpose behind that when it arises. We have to look back into history to see that. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I can always remember you saying to me, Steve, I may have mentioned this before, um, and it, it goes back a long way to when our, our son was small uh, and we were in a social situation. We both managed the situation differently. Uh, and uh, it was a bit of a source of contention between us. I can remember Steve saying to me, well, I, I can't be a mother. <laughs> to uh, our son any more that, that, than you can be a father to him and uh, that's always stayed with me uh, and it was it was yeah. huge, massively instructive because it's it, in essence it's absolutely true yeah yeah e everything about us anticipates yes, it does. that it does. format it doesn't does. it yeah 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 uh, so the, the the worrying thing for me is that uh, the terminal lucidity will be amongst those men who who don't wake up in the ordinary understanding of that yeah. uh, sense to see what has been done to them um, because those men who are competitive will not put up with them that's true and the women who are left will go with the men who are competitive they'll just swing in the opposite they direction will. They, they will, will. Yeah. they will yeah 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 uh, and there'll be fewer of everybody <laughs> yeah indeed what wants this idea that war is a good thing and that's being pushed around it's actually a good idea to go and kill people and exterminate them uh, and then they go all unconscious about the consequences to themselves once that takes hold and becomes a, a field-wide phenomenon it'll mm. break out everywhere mm. simultaneously mm. north korea will attack south korea iran will attack israel or vice versa china will invade taiwan america will try and defend taiwan and israel and then what's going on in Europe will expand and everything, all the dominoes will fall and it's it's easy to avoid. It's predictable and the whole thing is stupid uh, because unfortunately collective psychology is stupid. It does not realise it's embedded within biology. Yeah, it's the That's psychology the, of the herd, isn't it? Psychology yeah. of the herd. Yeah. But we, we still got time though. We have. Oh yeah. We have. And, and fortunately, or I hope anyway, the, the catabolic elements, which are isolated, they are connected as a field, but they're, they're isolated enough that they could be individually managed. But the politicians who are leading the world at the moment, all of them are dangerous, every one of them. Um, so what we can hope is that there'll be a local reversal of political power for certain people, uh, and that will prevent things from going on. That, that, it'll have to be at that level first. Unfortunately, the Adlerian level, uh, it'll have to be addressed there. Um, and that, of course, is dangerous because that can flit into instinct like that immediately. Yeah. And then we've got a, a, a world war mm. and nobody cares. It's a good idea to kill everyone else. Uh, very dangerous.